When this man inherited an old, worn-down cabin from his grandfather, he was laughed at immensely. His siblings all got plenty of worth when the old man died, but he only got the worn-down building, so naturally they made fun of the man in his wooden shack. But what none of them knew was that the structure held some secrets. So, after the man looked inside, he got the last laugh. But before we start, smash the like button and make sure to subscribe if you haven't, and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss any new stories. Arranging the funeral had been an awful experience for him, as none of his relatives seemed to know what their grandfather and father would have liked. Andrew felt the need to control everything and burdened himself with organizing the whole thing. It was time-consuming and made his mourning process even more difficult. But his real struggle would come after the funeral, as the inheritance was yet to be distributed between the family members. When that moment eventually arrived, it was no surprise to Andrew that he was the last to arrive. His entire family was already sitting in the notary's office when he got there himself. He shook his head discreetly and let out a small sigh. Andrew's grandfather was a wealthy man, and his father, mother, brother, and sister were all too eager to get what was owed to them. His whole family had heard their part. Now, it was Andrew's turn. What would his grandfather gift him after his demise? The notary looked at the humble young man with a serious face as she laid down the paper on which the grandfather's wishes were written. Your grandfather prepared something special for you, she said to Andrew as he reached into his desk drawer and pulled out a faded, old envelope. A mix of surprise and confusion appeared on Andrew's face. Something special he repeated to the notary. His grandfather hadn't told him anything about this. What could the old man have planned for him? The notary only nodded as she explained she knew nothing about the envelope's contents. Curiously, Andrew reached over the desk to accept the old envelope. It was heavier than expected, and there was something hard inside. Andrew didn't know how to feel as he was still processing the information. Was this really everything he inherited from his grandfather? He wanted to argue with his smirky sister, but in his heart, he knew she was right. Andrew had visited the lakeside cabin many times before with his granddad. And besides some fishing gear and a leaking rooftop, there wasn't anything really remarkable. He walked to his car in disappointment. It was not like he wanted tons of money. On the contrary, Andrew would love to have his grandfather still with him. But to get such a measly gift compared to his siblings, who never showed any interest in his grandfather, felt a bit like a stab in the back. Arriving at the property, he saw the scene he had been expecting. A dilapidated building with broken windows and a mossy roof. The sight of the worn-down cabin brought back memories for Andrew. He remembered coming here when he was just a young boy, fishing with his grandpa on the banks of the lake. Andrew walked around the place, grabbing some of the fishing gear lying around. His mind was racing as questions flew by. Why would his grandfather give this to him? Did he miss something? Andrew understood very well that this place held some sentiment, but it wasn't like he ever said he loved the place. Tell me what you want from me, Grandpa. Tell me what to do, he mumbled desperately. But as expected, the cabin remained silent, and his grandfather didn't come swooping in with wise words. The silence in his thoughts frustrated Andrew, and he started pacing around, eventually leaving the musky room. Finally, his frustrations reached boiling point, and he even contemplated tearing the entire cabin down. The wooden building was worthless but placed on top of a beautiful piece of land. Maybe he could do something with that. The confused and frustrated grandson walked around the cabin multiple times, surveilling the land and weighing out his options. Yes, yes, this area is beautiful. Maybe a small hotel or bed breakfast could be built here over time. But there was one big problem. Where would he get the funding? It wasn't like he got a large sum of money from the inheritance, Ideas formed in his head, but then, with a broad smile, Andrew got into his car and drove back to his place. The discovery changed his mood and how he felt about the inheritance. In his mind, he played the possible reactions of his family when they found out the truth behind his inheritance. And he wouldn't have to wait long as he was invited for brunch the very next day. His change in demeanor wouldn't go unnoticed, because Andrew couldn't help but walk into his parents' house with his newfound mood. However, his siblings saw this as a reason to mock him even more. They threw everything they had at him, but it didn't matter. All foul words bounced off Andrew like it was nothing. This was clearly not the same man they saw a few days prior. Andrew was extremely happy now, which made the situation increasingly worse. His brother and sister didn't understand what was going on. Normally, he would show signs of irritation, but now, Andrew seemed unbothered. His siblings were puzzled, and even his parents, who refused to participate in this mockery, looked at their son with wondering eyes. They knew he visited the cabin the day before. What did you see at that cabin, Andrew? They asked. But Andrew just smiled again and refused their request. The change in behavior shocked Andrew even more than his family was startled by him. It was a sight he had not seen before, 
and he wanted to let them sit in their own jealousy for a while. The more he denied them answers, the more they changed. It felt like they were a loving family. As his siblings stopped the mockery and acted friendly, it was nice, but he knew it wouldn't last. The moment his siblings knew what they wanted to know, their behavior would probably return to how it was before. However, the sudden change couldn't help but persuade Andrew to be a kinder brother and son, and eventually he gave in. Andrew sighed as he got up and caught everyone's attention. I will show you what I found, but I need you to promise to keep it a secret, he said. His relatives had been a bit hesitant about the whole situation. They were really curious about this mysterious cabin but hadn't expected to be confronted with it so quickly. But Andrew's confidence and his willingness to help all of a sudden spiked their nerves a lot. His turning around and walking away was the final straw. All right, we'll meet you outside in about five minutes, his sister yelled after him. Andrew leaned on the hood of his dirty dune buggy while he waited for his family to join. And now he was surprised again because his siblings didn't even wait for him to exactly show them his inheritance before returning to their old behavior. Because his sister arrived in one of the family's red shiny sports cars and his brother wore the most lavish coat he ever saw in his life. Andrew felt a stab of pain in his heart as he looked at them. Everything they owned, all the things they liked and valued, were given to them. Stuff bought because of grandpa's hard work. About an hour later, they all arrived at the lake cabin together. Andrew parked his car closest to the building, and his siblings parked their revoltingly expensive cars close behind him. Andrew's sister immediately stepped in feces of unknown origin, which amused him as she was definitely not dressed for the occasion. She grunted frustratingly and looked up at the cabin. Is that it? Her sister voiced the question on everyone's mind. Andrew managed to contain his laughter just in time as he looked at his family's faces. The disappointment on them was just an appetizer for Andrew's payback as the main course was waiting for them inside. Don't worry, you will see soon enough, Andrew proclaimed as he gestured for them to follow. They walked around the building a couple of times to add tension to the situation, and it worked just as expected. It was his sister that broke first, closely followed by his brother and parents. Come on, Andrew. We didn't come here to stroll around nature. What is the big secret? His sister said while the rest nodded their heads in agreement. Again, Andrew struggled to contain his laughter. But as amusing as this all was, he knew that the time for delay was over. It was time for the inside. The door creaked open with its familiar sound and slowly revealed the inside of the wooden cabin. When the door was completely open, Andrew stepped aside and gestured for his family to go inside first. He was eager to see their response and paid close attention to them. They went in blind and were expecting to see something amazing right away, but they had no idea what kind of mystery awaited them. Andrew watched his family walk around the innards of the cabin a couple times. He saw the confusion increase with each passing minute. They eventually ended up more confused than when they came in. The only things they saw were grandfather's fishing gear in the corner, a hardly functional table, and a small rug. It was all too much for his sister. What's so special about this place? Andrew, tell us now, she demanded. Now it was time for Andrew to finally unleash his laugh. He couldn't hold it any longer as he admitted to them that he first thought the same thing when he walked through here. It's just an empty cabin with a bad smell and some of grandpa's old stuff, right? Well, if you think that, you are wrong. Because there is more to this building than you might think. Look carefully, Andrew said. The sound of his stomping feet echoed through the small cabin. The hard and annoying sound drummed in their ears as Andrew continued through the room. It sounded the same everywhere, and Andrew's family was losing patience, but when he reached the corner of the room, something changed. Andrew moved the rug a little, and when he stomped in the corner, the sound went from a short, muted thump to a hollow sound. That's different, his father exclaimed excitedly. Andrew looked up at his relatives, and a broad smile appeared on his face. Confusion and questions filled their expressions, and he had them on the edge of their seats. Edward crouched down next to the rug and grabbed one corner before rolling it up diagonally. By doing so, he uncovered a large hatch, big enough for a person to climb through. His siblings gasped. Andrew had a bag on his back all this time, and now it was time to use it. He took it off and opened it, grabbing four identical flashlights out of it. Before even coming here, he had a feeling that they would eventually come here so he went over to the hardware store to prepare. We can use these, he said, as he turned the flashlights on and passed them around. With their flashlight at the ready, all four of Andrew's relatives headed down the dark set of stairs. The old wooden steps creaked under their weight, and they hurried down until they stood in an old room that smelled musky. Just the play you would like to hang around in, Andrew's brother snapped at him. But that attitude faded instantly when they realized in what room they were standing. Four beams of light darted around the room and Andrew could see the shock and surprise on his family's faces between the flashes of light. This can't be his father exclaimed. Are you kidding me, his sister said, her voice drenched in disbelief. But Andrew wasn't kidding at all. 
This was extremely serious. See, there is more than just an old cabin. Do you believe me now? He said, laughing. Because Andrew's grandpa was a well-known collector and trader of historical artifacts. In fact, his entire fortune, the one that his family relied on, was cultivated by this career. Everyone had thought that he had sold his whole collection before his death. He never even told his favorite grandson about the private collection he had stored in this secretive place. Andrew's family eyes grew larger and larger as they saw some well-known historical gems. One by one, the exclusive items were lit up by the flashlight beams. None of them knew the things their grandfather owned. But now they were looking at Cleopatra's staff, the sword of Alexander the Great, and even a piece of robe that was allegedly owned by Jesus Christ himself. It was a shock when Andrew found the unexpected storage for the first time as he shared the historical love with his grandfather. That share and vision made him realize how much historical value these items had, and it made him tear up. In addition, these items held emotional value to him as they belonged to his grandfather. Unfortunately, his family did not share this outlook. They only saw the dollar bills these items could provide them. There must be millions of dollars in this room just collecting dust his brother said with a jealous look. Andrew was going to turn this site into a museum. All of his grandpa's most prized possessions were in this place, and they would stay that way. It took him quite some time to achieve this, as he didn't have a lot of funds. Eventually, he managed to build a small museum next to the cabin. It had a lot of glass, so the beautiful environment was part of the design. He deliberately chose not to touch the cabin and kept it as ugly, rotten, and smelly as it was. That was the way his grandfather had liked it and it really gave the site a certain old vibe. It took a while before the first visitor came by. It wasn't near a city and hard to reach, but Andrew knew it was worth the trouble. He was patient, and eventually the first visitors came. Every day he would receive more and more phone calls from people asking if they could make a reservation to visit the collection. Andrew realized that his grandfather's collection was popular and that he could honor his grandpa by making sure as many people saw it but he wanted to make sure the nature around the cabin didn't suffer. Andrew formed a plan in his head to expand but keep nature intact. After a year of working at the museum in his free time, Andrew quit his job and worked at the museum full time. He managed to build a very nice museum that honored his grandfather's legacy and made him a pretty penny so he could live comfortably. Eventually, he hired some staff and visited the museum when he could to sit in his comfy chair and enjoy the breeze. Life is good, he mumbled to himself. 